Hello, my name is Keith Thompson. This is another one of the how to do it videos. This started out as a request to try and explain how you drill holes in things. Actually, it's a really, really difficult subject. So I'm going to narrow this down to explaining really what the, the most common types of drill bits can do. So to begin with, you've all got a tin at home with a load of twist drills in them. Obviously, these are meant for metal work but they are equally good for acrylics and for wood. The only problem with them in, with wood, in a way, is that the flutes aren't really big enough to carry the waste material away at the speed you're going to be able to drill. So you have to back the drill out every now and again to clear the, uh, the waste material away. Easy to sharpen. Um, obviously in wood you probably never need to sharpen them, but obviously if you use them for metal and woods, so you'll need to sharpen them but they are dead easy to sharpen. There's plenty of jigs around, or you can learn to do it by eye. And it's not that hard, to be quite honest with you. They come in umpteen different sizes. Um, they come, some of them, with a hex shank end. Most of them have a straight end. Some are known as the blacksmith drill bit, which is a little bit like this one, where you have a massive drill diameter, but still a slim shank. So they're called blacksmith drills or jobber drills. So they're the most common ones. Like I say, most people got a, a tin full of drill bits in the drawer and they're quite good for wood as well as all the metals. Now going now onto wood and acrylics, the most common ones are the lip spur type drills which have a single spur point in the center and two spurs on the outside. Otherwise they're very similar to a standard twist drill. You've got flutes with uh, good parallel sides which have edges which keep the, the hole clean inside. Um, they can break through the back of the, of the uh, work as can the normal twist drills. So sometimes it's a good idea to drill a tiny little pilot hole at the back of the work before you go through from the front just to, to aid the drilling. They come in all different types and sizes. This one's a particularly good one as it has very deep flutes and a nice solid land here to guide the drill through. So it keeps the drill straight. Again, single spur in the center and twin spurs on the outside. Again, very easy to sharpen. You can soon put some new edges on the point and just grind off the sides there on your, on your bench grinder to get a new edge on the front edges there. Um, they come in all kinds of different sizes, as I say, they're quite common. Buy them in sets, reasonably priced. The forced in a bit, as these are known as, um, they come in a very wide range of sizes from about 13 mil up to say 50 mil, sometimes even bigger than that. These have uh, diff several different forms really, but they all share the same thing and they have some kind of spur or point here. And then you have your cutting edges along this part here. And as you'll see on this one, this has a sawtooth type edge, which is the most common type, um, which cuts really, really well. They're mainly used for bigger holes or for doing a pocket where you can drill down to a certain depth. Um, you can buy them or have them fitted with an extension bar so you can drill really deeply. Um, you can see the, the big one here with the TIN coating. Um, again, the same design, single spur, cutting edges, and the sawtooth cutters all the way around the outside here. Um, another slightly smaller one. This does not have the sawtooth. It has a plain edge. That's, again, quite a common one. Always worthwhile buying them if you can with a TIN coating. It, it does make them last longer and there's a little bit less friction involved in the sides as well. Um, easy to sharpen, just sharpen that edge and sharpen the point. Um, we also have, beg your pardon, uh, a different style here, um, which has four cutting spurs and four side flute spurs as well. And you, know, you can see the waste will actually disappear up through because it's almost like a plug type cutter really. So the waste material is held up through the center. You can't really drill very deep holes with these, but for plug cutting and that kind of thing, absolutely ideal. This one's made by Fisch in Austria, so really top quality. And lastly, um, you've all seen this style of thing. These have actually been around years and years and years. They're basically, used to be just stamped out of a flat piece of steel and then sharpened on the edges with a spur point. Now this is a, a later sort of development where you've got a hexagon fitting and you have almost like a thread cut in this part here. Now I've used these myself quite a few times. You have to be pretty careful with them because they actually do penetrate the timber really quickly. They're brilliant for outdoor jobs and things like that. No way would I recommend them for any kind of carpentry type of work, but for a quick, cheap 
method of drilling holes, you can't beat it in a way. They will break out through the back like nobody's business unless you're really careful. Spot when you're going to get the, the uh, spur through, take it out, put it in through the back. That will, that will stop you having a breakout. But they are cheap, quick and very, very efficient, if a bit crude. So, there has been some new developments um, in Forstner bits. You saw me pick up this one just now. This one um, has a threaded, uh, sorry, a, a fluted spur. This is really important if you want to do inclined drilling. So you can imagine you can get your spur to bite long before the main body of the, of the bit is going to, to come in contact with the wood. Now, you must be really careful with all these kinds of spur cutters uh, or forcing the bits because they take a lot of effort to drive. So your, your 10.8 volt cordless drill is certainly not going to be man enough to drive many of these. Maybe for the smaller ones, but not the bigger ones. And so this is a new set we've got from Fish. They're the wavy edge type uh, cutters. It leaves a beautiful clean edge. It has the, uh, the twist drill style spur cutter. Now these can be removed with a little tool that you get. You just insert that in and it pops out like so. There's lots of different sizes. They come right down to the very smallest ones. And you'll note in the set here, you also get um, some square spur type cutters. These fit much further down inside, so they act then as a standard uh, type of force in a bit. So they can be removed again with the same tool, with a bit of luck. It's always a little bit of a fiddle, but you just got to prod it and it should come out like so. And this set also has um, a very useful Morse taper adapter, so that will fit into your, your wood turning lathe or your pillar drill. Used in the, in the taper of the lathe of the drill, it means you get a much more accurate fitting. A couple of different lengths of extensions, uh, which will actually lodge together. They also have this slightly tapered locking facility, which is a very slight taper with three flutes on it. So the flutes you can grip with a chuck, but these will lock themselves together and again use the same tool in the hole to surprise them apart. It's a very comprehensive set. Um, I'm sure there'll be a little bit more explanation video about these to come. This is brand new to us here, but I thought I'd just take the opportunity to explain that one a little bit. So there's a wide variety of different types of drill bits, but we've also uh, produced this little chart which you can download under any of our hobby or trade drills. You can laminate it like I have, stick it on the wall next to your pillar drill, and it gives you a handy quick reference, diameters, different types of drill bit uh, types, your twist drill, your brad bit points, forstner spade bits, and a selection of materials, like hardwoods, softwoods, acrylic, brass, aluminium, and steels. So that on the wall will just give you a quick eye level guide, a rough guide to what you should be using as a drill bit speed for various materials. That's it, thank you very much. <laughs>